All right, looks like I'm live. Hey, what I hope y'all's display doesn't look as bad as mine does in this replay, because I know I'm uploading on fast internet at 720p or 1080p, but on the replay that I watch, I try to watch myself as it goes. It looks bad. Not that I look good to begin with, but you know, it is what it is. What's going on? So, I was hoping I could actually be on time for once, but I missed it by about two minutes by the time I started streaming. Trying to get some of these tabs ready and stuff before we um, get started here. So what do we talk about first? A couple of different things on the agenda here. Y'all know I kind of just wing it, but I actually got a couple of subjects written down so we can try to somewhat stay on task for this without making it too, too long. But one of the big things that is important to everybody in crypto is the SEC has lost their damn on again. And I've been watching videos on this on and off all day and some of it yesterday also, and people have basically said, if this doesn't show that the SEC is against crypto, I don't know what else is. You know, Uniswap is basically just, you're swapping crypto. There's nothing that can be a security here or anything like that. But at some point, especially the people who live in the United States, at some point, the representatives, senators, people who are supposed to be representing us and doing what we want, which we know that's a joke, you know, so it's, uh, man, what's wrong with my camera now? But, um, you know, I, I don't know what, 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 what's going on with this, but at some point SEC has to get back in their, in their boundary lines because this is just getting stupid. And I know there were some representatives and stuff that called them out before, but I don't know what's, uh, I don't know what's happening here. SEC is is a joke. It's hindering crypto. And you had some senators and stuff that called them out earlier, a couple of months back when they were going after Coinbase and some of these other ones that basically said, you're pushing crypto to other countries. It's not helping us. You know, whether or not this is a political thing or not, because the United States wants to have their own digital currency. We, we can talk about that, but something needs to happen to the SEC. So there's that. So also I saw this earlier posted on Twitter X, whatever you want to call it this week, basically at t phones are roaming on helium mobile hotspots. Now, I'm showing y'all this because, you know, I, I just, I couldn't believe it myself, but AT&T appears to be, I'm going to tell you, these AT&T Wi-Fi pass points are set up, uh, passports, pass points, as, well, that's what it says, pass point. You know, that is, um, You can, if you go to Home Depot, I know at one time it was like McDonald's and a couple of different places like that. I have an AT&T phone um, and a FirstNet phone, which is also AT&T. But I, when I go into these places, I can see my phone jump onto their Wi-Fi. Half the time I turn it off because the Wi-Fi is so slow. I just go back to using AT&T or FirstNet, whatever it is, because it's way faster with the new 5G Plus service. And I'm getting like 400, 500, 600 download speed. It's stupid. But the so Wi-Fi is slower. But anyway... But apparently, I don't know if there's an agreement. I wish I had time to kind of look more into this. But if, if AT&T is roaming onto Helium Mobile spots, those people who did get Helium Mobile and put them inside, that's a huge thing. Very big thing. So, you know, I, I wanted to discuss, you know, just kind of just mention that to some people that, you know, I am, I do, you know, bash. 
like it's a sport almost, but bash helium, the, at least the IOT side, because they made it so easy with some of the decisions that they've made. You feel like uh, we've been abandoned on the IOT side. We've helped build helium on the IOT side for them to kind of abandon us and really just worry about the mobile side. But hey, you know, we, we're making 17 and a half cents a day. But it's, it's, it's a joke. You have to have 20 something miners like I got just to make it worthwhile. But I still think, I still think this is, this is a, a big thing. If this is true, I wish I could find some articles or anything like that. You know, I've, I've said before the helium said several times, helium mobile taking over that big company that was in Mexico. And them onboarding, I don't want to lie to y'all, but it was like 20 or 30, 40,000 subscribers onto mobile. It caused a decent jump in the mobile price. And at least they got some sustainable business on that side. Waiting for another Solana phone that's going to be coming out. Was it later this year, early next year? But I think I think if, if AT&T is somehow, or well, Healy Mobile, whatever way you, direction you want to say, I, I think that's a pretty big deal. So... We'll see. We'll see how it turns up, but I think that's a pretty, pretty big thing. Hmm. So, what else we got on the agenda? I haven't really looked at the charts. I've been running around all day. Um, last I saw, no Bitcoin was not doing too, too bad. I know we had a dip yesterday morning. You started hearing these rumors about, well, not rumors, but they realized that the inflation rate was not going down like they thought. Inflation was still going up or holding steady. Hell, I just got this Diet Coke can out of a vending machine before this live feed started, and it cost me a dollar. I remember when, when these Cokes were 50 cents, then 75 cents, and whatever like that, and this was a dollar. This freaking crazy. Let's put some Crown Royal in it. Um, but, you know, I think it's healthy, though, because you look at this drop, you know, and it, it got, you know, it got kind of eaten up pretty quickly. So, what was it, yesterday morning, 8 o'clock? You know, it's just weird. It's just weird that... Sometimes it goes down and then it comes up on Monday and then down. And But you know what? We're still sideways. You can say what you want. People losing their mind when it comes down here. But look at it. We're still in this this, this freaking range. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't, it, it makes you seasick. I don't even bother looking at it every day. You know, Ethereum. I don't know how y'all feel about Ethereum. I, I don't find it this, this big change they had. A while back, changed the gas fees that much. I tried moving a coin, had to be about a week ago, and they were charging me for almost the same amount of gas. It was like fifty dollars worth of coin, and the gas fees were still like thirty five dollars. I'm like, no, it can stay right where it's at. It, it's stupid. No, what else? Solana. I'm telling y'all, y'all see my little alarm set right here with. Trading view. If I get a loan that, that Solana hits $165, I'm buying it. I'm just telling you right now, not financial advice. Just, I, I buy it, you know. And even if I if I got a little bit extra money or whatever like that, um, you know, I think I, I'm, I'm one of those believers that believe Solana, if they can fix some of these issues they're having with the transactions failing. I know when I try to move IOT to HNT or IOT to Solana every night, the first two times it fails. Uh, it, it's, you know, there, there are issues with the Solana, but you still got all these memes that keep coming out. And, you know, it was at $200. I, I still think in this bull run, Solana can get the $600, $800. I, I just, I think, it, I think we saw it pass up BNB at one point. I think it can do it again. Um, 
let's see, pull a whiff. You know, I'm just holding on the whiff for the fun of it at this point. I bought it at 75 cents, and as soon as I, you know, as soon as I think about giving up on it because it just keeps going sideways, boom, back up to 425. You know, it, it's it's crazy. Then it starts falling again, and I start losing faith again. I'm sure at one point it'd be up to 425 again. Let me see if I can find mobile. That's the 15 minute chart of mobile. Daniel's asking about mobile. You know, when all this hype came about the phones and everything else going on, look at you at. I, I really thought the way it was going, it was going to go to a penny. Let's see what. I'm curious what the. See, one thing you got to look at with mobile is mobile's got 200 billion max supply, but all that's not released yet. You know, your total supply that's out there right now is 82 billion. We know that this is going to get released kind of over time, but not dumped because, you know, it's set up on an algorithm and, and how it's being used and different things like that. You know, it's at 285 market cap. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, um, I might have to think about that one and do some do some math on that. I'm, I am curious to know. Yeah. 287. So, three. So, let's figure that, you know, couldn't it get to a $600 million market cap just to get to a penny? You know, where would where would that put it at? Hell, that would only put it right here. So I, mean, I could see it getting to a penny when it, if if mobile keeps getting used like we're saying it's getting used, it's getting used in Mexico, it's getting used in in um all this different roaming and stuff like that that we're seeing that get used. You know, Looking at sugar from market cap, it can easily, easily get to a penny. It could easily get to a penny. It can get to a penny and still be in the two hundreds of coins. I, I don't think I don't think that's that crazy to say that. That's just me, my personal opinion, not financial advice, of course, because I don't really know how to tell you know look at charts and stuff. But I could see a triple. I mean, it almost got to a penny before. Two pennies. You know, what would that be? Like six, almost seven times? Let me see. Where was it at? You know, I mean, I, I don't see it getting to, to any of these kind of market caps, but you know, I still think, you know, well, I say two pennies is out of reach. I don't know. I, I just, you know, y'all know I hate giving price predictions. I, I can easily see it getting to a penny in this, as long as everything keeps going the way it's going. It keeps getting used. I, I still think, and I still think H and T is the answer. Does H and T get back up to forty? I'm not. I'm not making that prediction. But what I will say is that if you have to remember that H and T gets burned for data, and when these people on these hotspots are technically using data, and when Mexico, all these phones, these twenty, thirty, forty thousand subscribers, this is just one article that I read. They have to burn that. They have to be burning these tokens. And with a max supply, you only have 223 million max supply, which is not going to get all released until, you know, down the line over the years. So it's all released, but it's only slowly being released. You have 160 right here. You know, you're not even at a, at a $1 billion market cap yet. 
I can see I can see helium because you remember helium is going to get burned no matter if it's on the HNT IOT side or the mobile side. That's just me. I told y'all is when when helium's this low, I'm also taking my IOT from some of my stations. And what I've been doing is every other day is I've been burning. I mean, as my HNT comes in on all my twenty something miners, I am one day I'm putting it all towards Solana. One day putting it all towards H and T. One day all towards Solana. One day all towards H and T. That's what I'm doing. I, I got a decent amount of H and T, and I would love to see it go. Hell, if it goes back to twenty, twenty-five, thirty dollars, I'm sitting good. I can, I can definitely see that. I can see this doing a five X and getting back to thirty dollars in the bull market, as long as everything kind of keeps going the way it's going. Hey, you still got demo. And some of these other projects are using the Helium network. That's technically using their data, which is technically burning these tokens and using up those tokens. Just remember that it's still all circulating. You know, that's why I've, I've seen some people start complaining about Demo, where Demo just keeps keeps going in the wrong direction. And I mean, I was going to discuss Demo a little bit, but we'll use that as a segue to get into Demo is you have people asking this question. Oh, it's still going down what's what's the buying pressure of demo you know maybe somebody here can explain that i don't know if demo is part of their infrastructure is you have to technically buy demo or, or as it's moving the data or something you know helium you know that there's a buying pressure because technically you're buying those people using that data is buying and burning h and t the helium token as part of that data usage I don't know if it's like that for Demo. So like somebody said this, what's the buying pressure of Demo? Why would people buy Demo? You know, if if all Demo is going to do and all this chain is going to do is constantly just give us Demo for driving around with these products, these devices in our vehicle, and then we're going to eventually sell at some point, even if it's just selling a little bit today and a little bit next week and a little bit the week after that. You, if you constantly sell, this is what you start seeing. Is you know, this is when you started having like these big, everybody started kind of talking about it. Beginning of January. But you've kind of had this, 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 this kind of selling pressure. Does it, at some point, somebody has to start buying it. You know, I, I don't know. Y'all know how I am very, 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 very upset with Demo right now. Um, and, I've had several people contact me on the side who are in agreements with me that Demo has to open their mind up and change this rule. I got it. For those who didn't see my last video about this, um, if you've seen my videos about my you know weekly updates, Demo has always been my number one project that I have suggested to people. I'm giving y'all a, a hint right now that it will not be number one come Monday. The fact that I got a new vehicle and I didn't have a choice, I had to get a new vehicle, did not have a choice. The other one's gone. And now that I had to put my demo in the new, which I hadn't even done it yet because that's how pissed off I am, which again, I'm a childish person sometimes and I can recognize that and I'm just hurting myself. Yes, I know that, but I'm going to lose a 12 or 13 week streak with demo because the only way to swap your demo device from one vehicle to the other is you have to delete the old vehicle and now add another vehicle. You can't just do this swap, changing this VIN to change this VIN. It, it don't even have that. They don't even offer that to you. I've contacted them. I've contacted the people on Discord. You're basically deleting a vehicle starting new, and that's why it's starting a whole new streak, which is stupid. The demo only has to be connected once per week which I think is stupid also. If, 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 if Joe Blow is only making sure he runs that vehicle once a week to the grocery store and back, and that's it, and then for six days he doesn't use that vehicle, and then on the sixth day or the seventh day he runs that vehicle again, he can keep a streak going. I can use my vehicle seven days a week, and for half a day if I had to move my demo from one vehicle to the other and then continue to use my new vehicle 
seven days a week. I'm providing more data than he is, and I'm getting hurt. But yet I'm getting lectured in their discord by, by all these people who have been here for so long that you just don't understand what it means to give consistent data and to keep the streak alive. I do understand, moron. But again, y'all so close-minded that we've been doing this like this since day one. Y'all not thinking about the consistency that I'm still providing, even though I got to swap a vehicle, I'm still providing more than what some people are doing. When you got other YouTubers telling people, you just got to keep this thing plugged in once per week. Stupid, stupid. So, and then on top of that, what I was getting at is, last I checked, I, I, I mean, I don't think I was making, but like seven cents a day or something stupid like that. It, it's, uh, let me see, on my last, let me see if I can find it. Seventy-eight cents a day when it was at four cents, forty cents. So now we have thirty-five. So I'll do the math. Y'all can't see the calculator, but at at fourteen demo per device a day. I think that's what it is. Tom. Mm -mm -mm. 14 per device, 14 divided by seven. So basically that's two a day I'm making. So now I went from 78 cents to 70 cents, 70 cents, 70 cents a day. Listen, people, people flame me and, and attack me for going, for saying this kind of stuff about helium and stuff like that. We'll be doing it for the best of the project. No morons. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this stuff for free. Yes, helium. It kind of just once it runs, it's running on its own. You're right. What's and I said this in my last video, if y'all caught it or not, but what are you hurting by by going and taking your miners offline? So I would not go to my demo and just purposely unplug them and, and keep them in the glove box. I'm not that stupid, even if it's making 10 cents a day. But what happens is as people start having problems with helium devices or with demo devices or whatever, we just don't go through the trouble of fixing them. But that's what hurts. That's why you have helium that went from 990,000, almost, I think at one time they might've even hit a million, but they weren't, those weren't online. At one time in the, in the rush, you had 900,000 plus miners online. And last I knew you were down to 200 something thousand online. You know why? Because people ain't going through that for five cents a day. They can't afford rice at five cents a day. So, you know, I'm very, I'm very disappointed in Demo. I thought they were a very good project. I'm hoping at some point they change their mind. It's going to be too late for me because, you know, I have to get this monitor back online. So I have to, I have to go through a whole thing of, of taking my old vehicle off, put my new vehicle on, starting the trend over and starting it over from scratch. But I'm hoping that somehow they come around, you know, they can't really affect price that much but even when they were at 50 cents a day you know that, that means that means i was making a dollar a day but that's eventually going to keep going down because you still have you know these all these cars online you got there's a 2000 increase last week they came and get stock in right now eventually all that stock will start coming out and start um being shipped i don't know and then what happens same thing's gonna happen that will happen to helium eventually those rewards will keep going down and i don't know so y'all know how i feel about d uh, about demo so dfly has had some interesting news so dfly had a big article that was posted that they pushed out from unmanned air spray uh, unmanned airspace so let's take a look and see what that article says. I mean, I'm, I should be able to at least share the article without getting in trouble, you know? So I went to the link that I shared for the 
DeFly raised $23 million in funding. And somehow the, the invisible company that nobody can verify exists says they're worth $82 million. So now when you go to the link, this is what you get. Do you expect anything different? Do you expect anything different? So apparently, even when you pay people to post an article about you, it gets pulled. DeFi needs to understand that whatever they post about anything, they have screwed so many people over that people are going to verify this stuff. They're going to contact people to vouch for them. And I can tell you right now, I don't have the time or day. I've wiped my hands of them but they've made enough enemies around the space that anything that they say is going to be verified. So I don't know if somebody contacted the author of that article and said, do you realize what you're doing? Do you realize who you're talking about or anything like that? I don't know. I just know that when you go to the article now, it's not there. They also, I have um, screenshots that I got that on May 6th, I'm sorry, April 6th. No, I, what sucks is I can't even show you the screenshots because we've known that what they do is they come after my channel and anybody else's channel that says anything negative. You know, I can sit and talk negative about Demo and Demo is not going to come after my channel and try to shut me down. I can talk negative about Helium. Helium's not coming after me and shutting channels down and filing BS complaints with YouTube. But you're talking about DFly and you post anything of you post the DFly logo, you post just a website, their website on a public worldwide web, and you post their website, they're coming after you to against your YouTube page and claiming copyright infringement. And YouTube entertains it. So I'm not going there again. I'm not, I'm not doing that. So the stuff that's on there, on there that, that I got screenshot and sent to me, I can't show it to y'all because I'll get in trouble. Well, I guess you're going to have to just take my word that's on there. But again, we have screenshots. So even for this, so even back on May, oh, what was it? May 6th. I'm sorry. I keep saying May because it says April 6th, the next day. Fly was supposed to be created. They were supposed to be, that's their new, that's their new, 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 new token. And it was supposed to be verified by coin market cap and on Coinbase wallet. But here we are six days later, five days later. I keep telling everybody, I really want to start a ticker on the bottom of my, of my screen somewhere. And somewhere on one of these, it's going to say, this is how many days it's been since DeFly promised the CEX listing. I just don't know if I'm gonna use the September date, the August date, the other date in September that they promised. We have screenshots of that also. The October date, you know, I don't. I think they might have took a break in November, December, then January, then February, then March. Then March they said it's coming out imminent any day now. It was supposed to be an arrow, the new arrow was a base, whatever it is, aerodrome whatever for their for their um draw deck token that's why they went with the draw deck token because they knew they'd be able to get that one on cex faster than the dfly another one because that one existed longer those existed longer and there was more issues with that one but if they came out with this draw deck token and y'all supported draw deck it was coming that was 41 days ago hashtag imminent the reason we always say hashtag imminent in these videos well, if you ever see us type it anywhere, it's because that's what he put. Coinbase will be announcing imminently on March 1st, March 2nd. Listen, I hate to sound like a little kid that won't let stuff go away. I've told you all before, I'm just that kind of man that my channel is to help people from not getting fleeced. The things we talk about with DeFly or any other project that sounds negative, I, we can back it up. That's all there's to it. And, it, and I know I know how he operates. There's one person running that running that project. I can tell you right now, if he even watches, I doubt he watches my channels because he won't give it that kind of cred. But what I'm saying is that I, I know how he operates because I was on that side at one point. 
is anybody who talks negative, he won't sit there and justify or or defend what I'm saying. He will just attack me and tell y'all why. Or let me tell you why he don't like D-Fly. Let me tell you why this person doesn't like e D-Fly. Look, 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 look what look what this project is doing. He'll sit there and he would just he would just sit there and talk so negative about Crank and what that owner has done or the guy in charge of that. He'll sit there and just bash him without answering or being honest on on what we're bringing up. It's just attack. That that's how that works. So that's why I make sure anything we discuss in any of my videos, we have stuff to back it up. We have screenshots from months past. Of different things and stuff that was said and you know at some point i keep saying i'm not going to i'm not going to talk about it or even give that project credit anymore but when they keep claiming that they're making all this money and they're doing all this stuff and making deals with walmart and come on in you know now first it was bring your own device and put it on we'll let you bring your own device then it then then it became we don't want y'all to bring your own device anymore. you have to use our device and then it went back to a month ago. No, we'll, we'll let y'all bring your own device. You just have to pay for a license or whatever. Now, <laughs> as of April 7th, now moving forward, there will be no more new self-built devices on board. Then he also says how you can't use let me find it. Somewhere he talks about how you can't use the potatoes. You know why you can't use the potatoes? Do you know who, who turned everybody on to the potatoes? The potatoes were $35, $34. Now they are, you know, it's probably the same price, but I have used love potatoes, not just for these crypto projects now, but for some other projects with ham and different things I'm doing. I have yet to come across anything that a love potato can't do that a pie can do. Just telling y'all, does it, you know, does it, does it use up a little more, a little more resources? Yeah. Is it as robust and as, as fast? No, I'm not saying a lot of y'all, but I've yet to come across something. I mean, do you really think you're using that much system resources, whatever they're doing, but they can't use little potatoes no more. So y'all see what I'm getting at now? Just grow up, dude. Just grow up. You know, I still have a serious issue with the fact that a lot of people bought licenses for for self hosted, where they where they went and found host which they can't tell us why they found a host. They can't give us pictures of those hosted stations, but you could pay for someone to host your station and get the rewards. And now, because he doesn't like you anymore, some people didn't even say anything, those rewards have been cut off. I've been asking, hey, I'll send you back all my tokens if you can just give me a refund on my hosted. Yeah, sure, we'll email you. Still waiting for that. Um... Yeah, like he says, there's no way to detect your device make model. But he says it, you know, he use a lot of potatoes here. So what else we got? Speaking of that, so make sure y'all saw y'all saw you up my video where there is a special going on with Bidarver Studio. I have a video. I have a video for I know there's several people who went into the um who did the pioneer who wanted to try it out the 100 people so one of my questions was how do i go from pioneer to the full alpha version of bit harvest and i did a video yesterday step by step on how to do that make sure y'all y'all check that out um they have a promotion right now you can buy that premium bundle $35.98. Then you apply for the rebate. You get almost $16 back in BHST. And then you get extra 60 days free of premium license features. 
And basically, so when you have a problem, you just let them know. They dial into it and fix the problem. Not that you're going to have a problem because I think I got this running on five stations now. Um, one Bobcat. And I think four other stations. I just went and I'm going to show you all a screenshot in a little while of some work I just did on another one. Um, another bit harder station. Man, it works. I go to one website, um, one I address. Boom. I can do everything I need to do there. So make sure that if y'all are contemplating looking at bit harvest firmware, you look at, you look at this special because you're getting the premium service where you can do the other projects also. So now you get, now you can do all the projects. Let me, uh, let's go to the website real quick. Look at that. I go to them so much. It's on my tab. So, I know some of y'all watching here, there ain't a lot of people watching, but I know some, there's a good amount that watch this after because the people who contact me seem to be the people who watch this after. But a lot of y'all are in this already, but with the one-time cost basic, you get in the Helium, Things 1X, Wing Bits, Cure Corn, Pi Fi. And then with the premium, you're also getting the Honey Gain and the Pawn Map, Pawn App, Dog Tail Remote, Tail Scale Remote. So now you're basically getting this for free now. So you're getting the premium service for free where they can remote into it and take care of problems when you think you're having problems with it. I mean, to me, if you wanted to try this out, this is the time to try it out. So me, I got to start looking into the six and 14. I'm probably gonna end up having the 15 plus fleet because I keep telling y'all, every station that I do from this point forward, no matter if it's just a wing bit station, because I'm running out of helium devices, every station from now on will have bit harvest on it. I got one right now that I'm working out the details with the guy in Corpus Christi, Texas, that's going to host for me. Y'all know I want to become the, the godfather of the Gulf, and I will be there. I will get there one day. Um, And to, for me to get that corner of the Gulf on the on the west side, I need to be able to. Let's see if I can pull up the map real quick. <laughs> it's so hard to do this live. Y'all have no idea. How's that? So, this is what I'm covering so far with wing bits. This is this is actually Corpus Christi. Somehow I've already hit it one time there, but now when I catch this and I send all my stuff to him, he is going to make sure he puts the antenna on the golf side of his house, um, at the roof line. So I should be able to start capturing this side of the golf, and I'm working out with him right now. I'm shipping him the antenna directly from Amazon. And then I'm going to box up a device along with the green SDR feed line. And he just has to let me know how he wants to do power. If it's going to be locally where the antenna's plugged in or if we're going to do some type of POE. That's what we're working out right now. And I'm shipping that to him. I'm going to have tail scale on it. I'm going to have bit harvest on it. So I can also run from his IP. I can then run the Honey Gain and the Pawns app because it's going to be a different external IP. I can also run... The uh, Cure Coin, that's all going to be running from Corpus Christi. I have another device that has been sitting here forever. That's that's going up here to Gulf Shores. And it had wing bits on it. It's another one um, waiting on the, um, for a bit harvest to be able to get on a love potato. I'm going to have to swap it out. But either way. That's going to be around here somewhere, and I'm hoping I get that. Again, that's going to be bit harvest, running wing bits. That's going to be a different external IP, so I can also run Honey Gain, Pawn Apps, running Cure Corn on that one also. Um, I think I have one more Sense Cap because I was testing Sense Cap on the roof with my test between bit harvest and wing bits. And depending on, I'm going to have to go look on the Helium website, 
depending on which one has more stations, Corpus Christi or Gulf Shores, Alabama, you'd be surprised. Gulf Shores, Alabama, for how crazy that is, had Harley and helium devices. Depending on which one, I'm going to send a sense cap with helium out there if my hosts don't mind running two antennas or I might have to try the Y adapter antenna that I always said I never would do. But as you can see, you know, to become the Gestapo of the Gulf. Oh, but one thing I wanted to show y'all, let's go back to this here while I pull up. What I went out today and did was I am helping a friend who has a wing bits device. And let's see if this is going to agree with me or not. Look at that. Sometimes we just get lucky. So what I wanted to show y'all is, let's see if I can make this bigger. A little bigger. Everybody asks over and over, and I have people who argue, people who, you know, say it's no problem on the helium antenna. This is a helium 5.5, 915 megahertz antenna that y'all see in the beginning part of this. It's been like that for about two weeks, maybe, waiting on a 1090 antenna to come in from Amazon. It finally came in. Yesterday, we had all that horrible weather. I couldn't swap it out yesterday. So today, I swapped it out. So all I did was take a helium antenna. He already had a green SDR. The only thing that needs to be changed is, I'll admit, because you know I'm straight with y'all, now we have to redo the game because he had a helium non 15 megahertz antenna. Now he has a the 5.5 helium. I'm sorry. Now he has a 5.5 1090ADSB antenna. The one that I show in my links, the one that I pushed for everybody to go to. And you can see right here the gap from when I unplugged it and was working on it and getting it installed. And you can see how this was at 3 p.m. today. And you were at about a hundred, maybe a little more than a hundred airplanes, flights, or whatever you want to call it, aircraft, maybe uh a hundred and almost a hundred and ten. And now you went to 140. So you can see the difference that antenna. So, like we tell people, if you have a helium antenna and you want to use that just to get started, you don't you don't want to put a lot of money out. Um you have to buy the green SDR. Hey, wing bits doesn't cost anything to get into. So, you know, some people trying to use a wire adapter. I have not tried a wire adapter yet. I will tell everybody that. I keep saying I'm going to try it. I haven't tried it yet. But if you have bit harvest, where now you can run helium and wing bits off of one device and you want to put a wire adapter and continue to use that helium antenna, here you go right here. Yes, it will work. Yes, you will get aircraft yes you will get messages but with the correct antenna at the correct um frequency you're going to do way better so this was as you can see before what what kind of aircraft you were getting before and with adsb position so you were you hit like 120 now you are hitting 140, 150, 160. So you're doing 25, 30% better, if not more, with the correct antenna. Again, yes, helium will work. Right now you're getting 170 planes, 1,500 messages with the proper antenna, 200 miles consistently. This is, you know, because you got to put it on a pole. So the pole does kind of shade one side. I put the shade here because the approach to our airport, New Orleans International Airport, is this way, and Baton Rouge is this way. So there's a, um and the military base that's over here. So I wanted to make sure I had nothing shaded and blocked this way. So I put the shade block this way, if that makes sense to y'all. Two hundred miles. This 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 antenna is ten feet off the ground. So y'all can see what the difference is. Let's 
You can see, so you can see, you can see it's all higher with the new airplane, I mean, with the new antenna, where the, where the increase occurs at. So can you use a helium antenna? Yes. Will you get better results with the proper antenna? Yes. Another thing is, I don't want to start arguments with certain people, but you're hitting planes 40,000 feet in the air that are 200 miles away. This antenna has to be outside. Can you run it in the attic? I say no, but can you technically run it in the attic? Yes. You'll, you'll get 20, 30 airplanes. If you're happy with that, you know, I'm not going to say you can't. I know there's an admin over there. I'm cool with him. He's helped me out with a lot of stuff, but he continues to tell people that it's okay to do that. Hey, that's his project. But you want 20 or you want 200. It's that that's what that's what it is to it. Sidewinder, if you're still here, where are you located at? I'm just curious. I, I'm gonna tell y'all, I run on almost every one of my devices. It's something I speak very little about because I got so much flack for it in helium. And you know, you got so many people that attack me saying that they had their station set up forever and they never had problems. I use polyphasers on almost all of my devices. I've been in RF for way too long and I run polyphasers on most of my setups. I'm not gonna sit and lie to y'all again and tell y'all I do it on every setup because they're, they're not cheap. They're not cheap at all. But, you know, you get something kind of like, just to kind of show you what a polyphaser looks like. Let's fucking see, find a, a decent website. And like their prices are all over the place. So they have, they have cheaper versions on Amazon, stuff like that. But basically you have a polyphaser where, you know, the top part right here would connect to the bottom of your antenna. And then you feed line can go here. That's if you have just a short little antenna line that goes into your device. By code, what you really want is you want this where the feed line goes into the house right before it goes into the house. And then this is granted to a ground rod right there just in case any kind of static builds up on that feed line. If you would put this at the antenna and there's a feed line underneath it, if static builds up along this feed line, it's still gonna go into your device. Where you put that at your house, right at the level before your feed line goes in the house, then if any static builds up at all, it's gonna hit this polyphaser before it goes in the house. I will be honest with y'all again, cause I'm honest with y'all. It's a lot easier. I, I do. I just put these at the bottom of the antenna and just I have them with a ground line that goes to the nearest ground to the nearest metal pole or something like that, because nothing is going to stop. Nothing is going to stop a direct lightning strike. If I have been in my backyard when my ham antenna and one day, I guess I can drum up all those photos where my ham antenna, which was a dipole that went across the yard with one feed line down and that got struck by lightning. The storm was over a mile away. Somehow my dipole, that was about 40, 50 feet in the air. It looked like something out of Batman. The whole thing was in flames as it came down. And that was a colon cleansing experience like I've never had before. I thought I was shot and killed. Um, it was so loud and it put probably, I'm not exaggerating, a two or three foot hole in my ground where that feed line went down. Um, if, you're, if your antenna gets struck by lightning, nothing's saving it. Nothing's saving it. But what happens is, as lightning is getting struck a mile, half mile away, or even closer, there's that static electricity that builds up in the air. Your antenna, your feed line, will start kind of like you know, when you're driving around a vehicle, uh, in your vehicle, then you get out and you touch something and you get shocked. That's that static that's building up. Y'all know, know what I'm talking about. Even dry air when it's not raining. Dry, dusty air builds up static along your feed line, along the antenna. If you don't have one of these, that feed line's, that static's got to go somewhere. And guess where it's going? It's going in your device. 
we've seen, especially these green SDRs, these things don't handle static electricity well. I'm going to tell you all that right now. I've been through a couple of them. I've been through the blue ones. I've been through the green ones and the black ones. I've had them all go out. So don't, I don't want nobody to say what one's version is better than the other. But maybe, maybe I need to start talking a little bit more about polyphasers and just take the ridicule. So, Sawanda, I'm sorry that, that that happened. Been there, brother. Done that. Um, I, I've, I've had them that... I've had them where at certain host locations and stuff, I, I had some helium devices that were on utility, kind of utility things for um, the utilities department, and we were running some sensors and stuff, and it seems like almost every, I don't say every time, because I don't know how often it did or didn't happen, but when that power got turned back on from the power company, if they had a power outage, there was a surge that was taking my stuff out, and it got old quick. And I just didn't put, I just didn't replace it. Um, same thing with, with uh, one of my pies. And it that one hurt because it was a sense cap that I converted to a pie for D-Fly. And that one was at a host location. Power went out. When the power came back on, toasted it. And that was even with plugged into a surge protector. And it still got toasted. Everything in the surge protector still got toasted. So those kind of things happen. I'm sorry to hear that happen to you. Oh, oh. Santo Antonio. Um, if you're from San Antonio, I go deer hunting right south of there, man. Y'all got some crazy gigantic deer in that corridor. But anyway, is it possible to do multi mining without VHS? Yes, I know that there are some. People that have said they have multi mined with crank, where they could do crank and with um, helium and stuff like that. I've never messed with it. I, I'm not too much of a crank fan. I, I don't want to start bashing projects and stuff on here without having my back, like my stuff to back it up. But I was in that Discord for a little while, and the guy that runs that project, I've seen him the way he's acted in some of the other pages discord pages including like helium and stuff and he's about as toxic as our a-hole friend from dfly i almost thought they were the same person to be honest with you that, that's how bad it is so i can't tell you too much about crank but again listen i'm not paid by bhs i'm not paid by bit harvest i don't work for bit harvest y'all know how i get it when i start getting behind a project and look in dfly I look like the a-hole with the dunce cap. But when I really get behind a project that I feel good about, I really get behind it. Hence wing bits, hence BHS. I, I've talked to those guys on the phone, not just through text messages, but actually on the phone more than once. Me and those guys have a private message that keeps going back and forth on Discord where we throw all kinds of stuff out and ideas and stuff back and forth. I don't know why you wouldn't run or run bit, bit harvest. The only th reason I can say not run bit harvest is if you have a device that bit harvest hasn't supported yet and you're trying to run, you know, like wing bits and you need that USB and say maybe you have a, a um, Bobcat or something. You know, I know they're working on Bobcats, but for the price I just showed, you know, just showed y'all, you, you can't beat them, man. It, it's, um, they're doing, they're doing some good work. Those are guys are passionate about it. This is something they've been doing on the side of their full-time jobs, and they're passionate about this. They even started that the Bit Harvest token and did all the stuff with Solana so that they can take those payments, Solana payments, stuff like that. This is not just some fly by night thing. You know, to me, to me, when you can go to this and just see what you're working with, you know. To me, that, that that's just, it's cool. You know, I can go to my one device and see what the, what, what each one's doing. I can be able to quickly look right now at my Helium device and see, without even clicking on the Helium, excuse me, my Diet Coke's coming up. But uh, right here, quickly, 53 submitted witnesses in 24 hours. Um, Potential beacons, 55. Four cent beacons in 24 hours. This is where my next beacon is. 
I, I don't remember even speeding up to see that with helium. You know, you, you go to wing bits and you can you can mess with your config. You can go straight to your tar 1090. So you just hit that and it automatically pops up and goes to where, you know, you need to go to tar 1090. And then right up here, it says stats available. You click that and it goes to here. You know, cure coin. Cure coin is a great project. Uh, you know, I don't know why. I'm trying to think which one I have. Let's see if we can go to this one. This is one of my other bit harvest ones. And this one's got cure coin, wing bits, helium. I'm trying to remember. See, that's the problem. Now I have so many. <laughs> I have so many bit harvest ones. I have to remember which one. Because you can only run per external IP. You can only run bit harvest, Luna. Oh, let's try boat launch. You can only run um, Pawns app and Honey Gain on one external IP. So I have some that have. See, this one has Pawns, Honey Gain, and Helium running from it. So, so this is one that does not have. This is my Bobcat. So my Bobcat does not have. Wing bits running on it. See, this is the problem. I got to start keeping better notes. I told you, I, I have horrible notes. So at least y'all see how much I'm supporting Bit Harvest because of how many devices I have on Bit Harvest. So this one has my Pawns app, Honey Gain, and Helium on it. This is still the beta version. I have to, um, I don't know what we're going to do about the Bobcat. But at least I can go to Honey Gain and look, all I'm going to do is go to Honey Gain and hit dashboard. Boom. It comes up. I don't have to worry about Go and get into the Honey Game website and, and going into it, I can see my Honey Game. And it shows me what devices I have. So I do have some other devices that are running Honey Game. You know, boom. Oh, look, there's Pawns app. Again, all this is on one device, one dashboard. Dollar 22. I'm retiring next week. Y'all watch out. But it's all on one device now for me to sit here and remember <laughs> which one of these uh, i thought it was the roof one that i had I told you i just can't keep up with all this stuff pure coin wing bits helium i don't know i'm i make myself like a fool at this point On the wing bits, click config, which has buttons such as replay to replay history, traffic data, look at heat map. So, like, it is more coming. How about that? You know, now you're going to have me tamp, trying to figure out which one of my bit harvest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's Walnut. We just looked at Walnut. Again, I got to start keeping better notes. Pure combing bits, helium. Mm -mm -mm. The boat launch, roof, BHST. I don't know. One of these devices is running all of them. All of them. It is good. So. The mobile running two batteries. Y'all had a tornado go right north of that in, in Mobile. I was watching, when I was watching everything going on in Slido yesterday, y'all know I'm really into weather. I'm, I'm also a member of the actual National Weather Service. I'm in their chat. I, I was granted access to that. And they were watching some circulations. And that guy I showed you on YouTube was watching some circulation just north of Mobile. And there was another one that drummed up right north, north, southeast, west, northwest of Pensacola. I don't know where Saeed is, but um, I know he's close to there. But at no point did they ever say that it was actual circulation that hit the ground like Slidell got. So, um, I'm going to tell you, I, I see your messages on there. I've lost, at one time with my ISP at home, I was buying my own, mo my own modems along with my own... Um, routers. I end up getting so many surges killing that coming across that data line that comes from the from their line outside. Their cat 
it wasn't Cat 6. It was RG6. I quit buying them myself because if it's theirs, they replace it. So you'd be surprised how often the surge can come in through your ISP side. I guess maybe if you have fiber coming in your house, which a lot of people don't, if we don't have it yet, we're supposed to be getting it at some point. But um, you'd be surprised how much surge can come in through your cable provider into that modem. And I guess if it doesn't stop there, it can go to anything that's connected to. So I have seen that come across Ethernet before. So it sucks, man. I know them pies aren't cheap. I don't know. So you're going to have me going through all these things. I still think this is cool. Um, just to show people, people still want to argue. So you can see consistently seven days, seven days, seven days, seven days with that helium antenna did and where it's at now. One thing I will say though, and, and I'm not trying to accuse nobody of nothing. Please don't take it the wrong way. But what I have learned in my testing was, let me transition this back over. I'm going to figure out how to get this over here. And then I'm going to put this back. Transition it back. Here we go. So this messages thing right here with wing bits means nothing. I don't know if that will officially ever come out, but y'all can look at this, this device right here. Let me see if I can find, I want to show y'all, I want to show you how much better the wing, the, the bit harvest device is doing. But let me find a device that is comparable. This is a good one. Okay. So you look at the range on this one. This air, I'm getting 215 aircraft on this one. This is on top of my tower. Oh, this is, let me rephrase that. This is my station on top of my friend's tower where he let me use a spot that he had open. And as long as nobody ever wants to lease that space out, I'm good. I'm doing IT work for him for free. He's allowing my, my, my intent up there for free. So when you look at this one, you look at this one, look at the aircraft difference. Look at the messages difference. Y'all see that? I'm getting, somebody help me, my college math fails me again, 500 more messages on, on um, I'm sorry, my wife's blowing up my phone. She probably can't believe I'm still doing this. Um, probably wants to know what I'm bringing home for dinner. I'm the cook of the house. So 500 more messages with this bit harvest station. Um, 80 more aircraft. But according to Wingbits, this is still the better station. The message don't make nothing. Just want y'all to be aware of that. I set up for those, and I really didn't do a video on it because I'm still questioning some of it. I have two stations that were on top this roof, exactly the same. Same sense cap, same feed line, same antenna, same height, same everything. In the wing bit station did just as good, if not better, than the bit harvest one. But when you went to this screen, the bit harvest blew the messages out the water, blew it out the water. But what 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 they're trying to say is the messages could be stuff that wing bits is not using. It could be, excuse me the air condition temperature of inside the, of inside the, the cabin. Um, is the rotor in flap at this position? I don't know. And I was kind of upset by with that to a point because to me, it shows you that bit harvest has tuned their, their software up a little better. I don't know what words I, I can use, but again, look at this. 500, almost 600 more messages, but yet 
This one has more aircraft, but this is 10 feet off the air, 10 feet off the ground, 1,500 messages, 400 feet above the ground, 380, 400 feet, 950 messages. A little bit better range on the other one. But just to let so just to let y'all know, I know a lot of people, the reason I bring it up is a lot of people have asked me, a lot of people in the Wingbits Discord asking about messages, messages, messages. And basically, one thing we've proven is that with the bit harvest, you will get the same, if not better, reports because the aircraft are basically identical. But you don't have to kill yourself as far as what messages and my because this is just what people have put on there. My my friends, my friend set up gets X more X more messages than mine gets and stuff like that. And it doesn't really matter. You know, that none of that matters. Oh, oh, oh. So another thing is I want to make sure I, I say this. With with some of these new versions coming out with Bit Harvest, they will have um the SDR calibration so that you can calibrate this. I know another thing is, and it's not just the green ones. I know people like to throw shade at my green ones for some reason. I've tested them all. The green and those blue ones with the filter in them, they work very, very close together. One's got the filter on the other side, but I don't want to lose y'all. But these do float with frequencies a little bit. And I've learned that a lot with this one because I used to use this one in ham a lot. And a lot of VHF stuff with these. Um, I was using these to do some, some, we, you know, we're on the Mississippi river and kind of close to the Gulf and they got the little locator devices for, I forget what it's called for boats. And it's supposed to be at this frequency. And when I first started setting it up, I was, I would dial this in on the exact frequency and I wasn't getting anything, but if I would fudge it up or back a little, I can't remember which one it was. I found them when I, then all of a sudden I'm on the map, all the boats along the Mississippi river within about 30 miles of me start showing up. The frequencies float in this. So you know that I thought I had a green one right here somewhere. Oh, look, I do have a green one. So you know in these, or the blue ones, or or even these yellow ones. I got bar still connected to us. Even like these yellow ones, you know the frequencies are gonna float. Bit harvest is gonna have a tooling inside one of the new versions coming up where you can retune or you can adjust so that you know you're getting the optimum 1090 frequency at 1090 frequency if that makes sense to y'all and i don't i don't want to lose y'all getting too much in the weeds um so also there is a config pop-up no captures all existing configs and Shows them when user open config window, and it is a wing bits antenna gain or feed gain that's coming. Um, oh, yeah, I got a screenshot, secret screenshot of one what's coming up in the new version, and there will be a slider so that you can adjust the gain on these. So that's cool because if for those who have played with wing bits, I'm gonna tell y'all. I don't have a single device that has the, the the right antenna, the 1090 antenna in this running at full gain. And I don't like running the, the auto gain either because I find that auto gain changes it too many times to full gain. And I don't ever need that with this. Most of mine are running at like a 40, is it 46 and like maybe a 49.6 at the most. So with, with the bit harvest, you'll be able to do a slider on that. <sighs> um. So SDR calibration utilities in the works, which will further enhance ADSB capability. An example, more planes to report to wing bits because they want the planes. We've learned that. But y'all see these guys are working just because they got this firmware out doesn't mean they're sitting still. Um, so Sawanda, you got fiber and you still, I don't know, man. I'm going to tell you. My office got hit last year with a lightning strike. We got hit with a lightning strike. I thought a tank was coming through my back wall right here. I lost the TV, the computer on the TV, but that computer was in the switch with my big computer with 
that uh, my high-end R9 processor with video high-end video card and stuff that didn't get touched. My um, KVM that controlled my mouse and keyboard between two to three different computers was hooked to that computer, another computer I have for Motorola stuff, and um, my computer that goes to that TV so I can watch all my crime cameras and stuff like that. The crime camera, the computer, all that got fraud. TV got fraud. They all plugged into the same UP, same UPS with a KVM. It's just crazy, dude. It's just crazy. Split a 40-foot pond 30 feet from your house. So basically, you had one of those free diet colon cleansing experience like I got when I was outside picking up my kids' pool stuff before the thunderstorm came and took out my ham antenna. Yeah, that, like I said... That was the greatest colon cleansing diet stuff in the world. Then I said a prayer, went to church Sunday. And hopefully me and the big man upstairs are good. So y'all not going to sit and chit chat with y'all all day, but I know some of y'all don't want that. So I thank everybody for following. Appreciate it. You know, like I, said, I know there's only about six, eight people that watch this, but I know there's several that I see the views after. I got to figure out how to download it and then move it over to my regular video so everybody can see this. Because for some reason, if you don't click on live, you don't see these videos. But I appreciate appreciate it. Um, you're looking out the window and it happened. I don't know, man. The way people treat me on Discord, I'm going to tell you, if you ain't got no video, it didn't happen. I don't believe you. I'm just joking. That's just what people keep telling me. You know, as if I got time to make up all kinds of stuff. But uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate the, you know, not, oh, I hit 9,000 subscribers. I'm just noticing that. So to 9,000 people, y'all must be really bored. I appreciate it. Y'all know I'm straight with y'all. As long as DFly don't get my page shut down, my YouTube page, I'll be good. There's a lot more stuff I want to say about that. I could do a whole nother hour long video on the games that they're, they're playing. And the adult, me, the adult me keeps saying, move on, leave them alone. But the man in me says, I can't take the chance of the stuff with the stuff I know. I can't take the chance of even one more person getting fleeced, spending 200 something dollars on something that will never arrive on a project that nobody can verify. And part of me just wants to just protect people. You can't protect everybody. And I guess if people would go through my videos, they would see what I have to say about them. But some people just want to take that chance people are so worried about being first and being early in the projects and stuff they're willing to take that chance you know wing bits i, I can see wing bits you see these guys on their um um amas you've seen them on videos you've seen them you know they exist. They will to put their face out there same thing with the guys in bit harvest you know who they are you know who their real names are you know that they exist D-Fly keeps using the excuse that we just, we, we don't believe that any, any of that's necessary. You don't need to know who we are. Just trust us, bro. I don't see why these days there's so many good projects now to get involved in crypto. You don't have to take those chances. I've also said that if I am wrong on D-Fly, I will be the first person on here as a man saying I was wrong. And I will pay for YouTube to promote that video to tell everybody I was wrong. That's how sure I am that I'm not wrong. There's enough good projects out there. I need time. I wish I had time. People keep sending me projects to look into. I wish I had time to look more into some of these projects. I don't, um, you know, I, I got people, I still got from last weekend. I know I haven't seen Dallas on here, but Dallas keeps asking me to look into XNet, XNet and, you know, I haven't seen XNet. I haven't had a chance to look into XNet yet. Um, Somebody asked me about another project earlier. Somebody asked me about PyFly. I don't know too much about that. But, uh, you know, Daniel, I see Daniel's on here. I, I'm hoping, I got to figure out a way to get you, I got to get you this SD card faster. I mailed Daniel. Daniel is in Africa. He is going to be the first online station on Wingbits in Africa. That is a huge deal. They've even touted that on LinkedIn. I don't know if Daniel saw that and on Twitter. And I mailed him an SD card and then he tells me it's going to take two to three weeks to get there. And 
that's not good enough for me. I'm too antsy. So I have to figure out a way. It's a little potato. I have to figure out a way whether or not I put it on a GitHub or something to get that to him. I might even be able to put it on my drive. I just don't know how many gigabytes it is. But I need to get Daniel online. I want to see. I want to see his country lit up and uh, get Africa and get his get that locked up. So I know it's going to be a big deal. I know Wingbits is excited about that. And we need to get that rolling. So we're going to work on that, too. So. Oh, what else? I don't know. I've talked long enough, guys. It's been an hour and 18 minutes. So. Yeah. I said, Daniel, I, I mailed it out Wednesday on uh, Monday morning. It went in at the post. I brought it to the post office so that it could start on Monday. So we only a Thursday, brother. I think you got some a ways to go. But thank y'all. I appreciate it. And uh I know I'll be doing a video sometime this weekend, catching up on news and stuff like that. Monday I'll have my update. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna rank demo at. I'm even thinking about starting a section on my on my weekly projects thing. A section like stay the hell away from these projects. Right now only, only D is there. Really don't know if I'm gonna put demo there or not. I'm y'all know me. I get petty when I'm pissed off. So see y'all later. Uh Said, I gotta get you that. I gotta get you that little potato, man. I gotta work on that. I might work on that this evening. I still have your address from when I sent you Bobcat. I'm gonna work on getting you that this evening. I know I tried put VHS on the card and putting just put it in a little potato. It did not work. So the boot the boot side of that's a little bit different. That's your expertise, not mine. But I'm gonna get you a little potato and we're gonna get that working. So we'll get that rolling. All right, guys. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for following. Thank y'all for being involved. And we'll see y'all on the next video.